Hey guys, welcome back. I finished up my Dactylus keyboard over the break, and I'll be going through and showing you how I put this together. I finished putting in the switches for the other half of the keyboard. So it's been a while since I did my last hand wire, and I just wasn't remembering correctly and actually put the diodes in wrong. So ignore these diodes here. I'll go over how to properly do them a little bit later in the video. So what I'm doing now is I'm doing all the columns. The columns connect each key in a row, so you have like escape, uh, tab, function, shift, and control is all one column. So I'm taking a wire and going connecting all those guys. If you look at the wiring diagram, it shows exactly how I'm connecting these guys up. The Pro Micro, which is the chip I'm using, doesn't have too many pens to use, so I had to get creative with the columns and Every single column also connects one button of the thumb cluster. The wire that I'm using is 26 gauge solid copper wire. And the only thing that I did special to it is I took an X-Acto knife and cut out parts in the middle so that it'll line up for each pen. Using a single length of wire is just a lot easier than using a whole bunch of small pieces of wire, which could get a little bit tedious. So after the columns are done, I moved on to the diodes. I screwed up the diodes on the first attempt. The reason being is that diodes only flow electricity in one direction. The way it's supposed to work is that electricity flows through the columns and when you press the key, the electricity flows out through the other pen that the key has and through the diode out to a connected wire that goes to the microcontroller. However, the way I'd wired it was just like the columns where I took a diode and went from one pen of one key to another pen of a different key, which defeats the purpose of the diode because if you press one key, you're basically pressing all the keys. So when installing the diode, just keep in mind that it's a one-way street, and you can tell that by the black line that's on the diode. The black line should always be facing away from the switch. After finishing up the rows and columns, I started soldering up the Pro Microcontroller. There's nothing really special about this. It's just connecting up all the wires. Make sure you reference the wiring diagram if you're gonna do this, because it gets a little bit complicated knowing which wire goes to where. The only real unusual thing that I did is, and some of the pinouts for the Pro Micro, I shoved in two wires, one which would go to the row, and the other which would go to the other half of the keyboard. So my keycaps finally came in after Christmas, so I was really happy with that, so I put them on immediately. So I had a lot of fun putting this thing together, but I did have a few issues. One was the diode situation where I put in the diodes incorrectly. I already covered that. But the other thing is the USB-C. Originally I was going to have USB-C to connect the two halves of the keyboard, but for whatever reason, the signal would not go from one half to the other, except over one pen, and I needed all 12 for it to work. Either when I was soldering, I overheated something and uh, blew out the lines, or it just never worked to begin with, and these are Chinese-made uh, USB-C breakout boards, so the quality of them might not be that great. So I finished making this keyboard about 4 o'clock, and it's about 9 o'clock now. So I've only had about five hours to use it, and much of that has been during video editing, which I don't really use the keyboard too much. I have a few shortcut keys that I use. So I haven't had a huge t amount of time to go through and see how it works. Uh, I can already tell you that is quite a bit different than the Ergodox that I use daily. Uh, the curved nature of it makes keys come out in different places than you would expect. Um, just whenever you move a little bit with your finger, you're moving a lot more than you would on a flat keyboard because of the curve. And this is one of the reasons that this is supposed to be a more ergonomic keyboard, is that your fingers have to travel less the move further. So I'll be seeing how I get used to this over the next couple weeks or whatever. I'll be using this as my daily driver until I just can't deal with it anymore or it becomes my new favorite keyboard. And at which point if it becomes my new favorite keyboard, I'm going to be start using at work just because I want to be more productive at work with a nice keyboard. And right now my key uh, my words per minute have gone down significantly. Usually I'm about 60 or 70 words per minute, which isn't huge, but you know, it gets my work done. 
and now about 20 or 30 words for a minute, minute. So yeah, I can't really use that for work right now. So in part one, I got a comment about hand wiring. So I went a little bit more in depth than I would have on this video about hand wiring this guy. Uh, even though that was most of the part that I needed to finish, nothing's really that hard. It's just a little bit takes a lot of time actually. And you have to be very careful about which wires go where. You know, just pay attention and take your time and you'll get it done. So if you have more questions or comments, then please leave them below. Be happy to have them. And I usually get around to answering everything I see. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give me a thumbs up and think about subscribing. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.